there is a computer science problem called subset sum, which is about finding if there is a subset of numbers that add up to zero. And there is a more specific version of this problem, which is about figuring out if there is a subset of size 3. So let's look at this problem, but with a modification that we don't want just yes or no as an answer, but we want to know what those subsets actually are. In other words, given a collection of numbers, we want to know all combinations of three numbers that add up to zero. It sounds a bit abstract, but it's one of the most popular exercises on the LeetCode website, so I assume it's used quite a lot for coding interviews. The official name for this problem is a bit weird. It's called a threesome, where three is a digit and sum is spelled as sum. So be careful when you click on search results. And ignoring the naming issue, let's look at some code. So here I copied the problem description from the lead code website, which says that we are given an array of integers and we want to find all unique triplets in the array which sum up to zero. And the solution must not contain duplicate triplets. From this description, it's not entirely clear to me what is the difference between unique triplets and duplicate triplets, but let's keep that for now. And obviously it doesn't say why we're doing what we're doing. And we also have a couple of constraints that the size of the array is between zero and 3000, and the numbers in the array are within this range. We also have a couple examples. So in the first example, we actually have some data, and in the other two examples, uh, like trivial examples. Then I copied the uh, function definition from the lead code website, and the first thing that comes to my mind is to replace int array with a list of ints, because int array is not very idiomatic in Kotlin, and I wouldn't really use it unless I absolutely have to. I think here it was used because the problem description is in terms of array of numbers, but that's not really necessary. And I would probably rename nums to ints, because it's a more specific name, and what we have is integers, not just numbers. Or even better, we could convert this function into an extension function, and that we, then we don't even care about the name. And in terms of the return type, I would prefer to have set, because we want to find all unique triplets, and set expresses that the result items are unique. And instead of list of things, we could use a triplet, because that's what problem definition says. So we'll have a triplet type alias, and I'll keep it as a list for now. And then the final thing is the function name, which is threesum, but that's the name of the problem, and it doesn't really tell us what the function is doing. So we need some kind of verb, and I think the best verb is on line 6, which says find all unique triplets, so that's definitely find. And then I would go for zero sum triplets, because uh, unique is already expressed in the type. And that was one line from lead code, and it's all completely wrong. And that's okay for me, because I know Kotlin, and I'm not being interviewed, so I can do whatever I want. But it might not be okay for other people who might even be learning how to program based on these exercises, so that's not great. Uh, thinking about the problem itself, we want to find all unique triplets, and uh, all unique triplets with zero sum. And to do that, the simplest approach would be to try all possible triplets, and then only keep the ones that we're interested in. And to do this, we can just do three nested loops, and I'll do these loops based on indices of elements, not uh, the values themselves. So we'll have three loops, one going through indices, then a nested one with index i2, and then a third one going through indices with name i3. And inside here, we want to make sure that all elements are unique, so I'll say that i1 is not equal to i2, and i2 is not equal to i3, and i3 is not equal to i1. So th this is basically saying that we don't have overlapping indices, so I'll call it no index overlap. And the other condition we want to have is that the sum is equal to zero. And for sum, we can just sum up elements at these indices, so it will be this plus i1, this plus i2, and plus i3. And inside, if these two conditions are true, inside the if statement we want to add the elements to the result. And the simplest thing would be to use a hash set, and I'll call it result, and move it to the top. 
then we want to add a triplet to the result. So I'll copy these three numbers and they're going to be like this. So this unfortunately not going to work because, well, IntelliJ says interface triplet doesn't have a constructor, but it's type alias. What it means though is that we have list interface and the list interface doesn't have a constructor. What we can do though, we can define a function called triplet, which will pretty much serve us as a constructor. So it will have three parameters, first, second, third, and it will return a triplet, which will be just a list of uh, the three elements. So hopefully this compiles. And if I were doing this on the lead code website, I would be kind of I would feel incentivized at this moment to just click the button and submit a solution and see if it passes the test. And in a way, that's the way lead code encourages bad behavior for developers in the sense that you might at work do some work and then think about it for a bit and then throw it over the fence and expect somebody else to actually verify that it works. And that's not great because like, we ideally should take responsibility for what we're doing. I'm not going to use website here and I will write just minimal tests. And the minimal thing in here would be just to try the first example. So this is the input that we have. And the input is the list of these elements. Then we want to find triplets and ascertain the triplets that they are equal to set of uh, triplet with minus one, minus one, two, triplet with minus one, zero, one, and we can delete the comment. So let's run the test. Unfortunately, it fails, and it fails because we expect only two triplets, but we got way more than two triplets. But some of them, they have, they're very similar, and the only difference is the position of the elements. And at this point, it becomes kind of a question, what do we mean by equality for triplets? And that takes us back to the question about unique and duplicate triplets. So for now, for this implementation, it would make sense to consider triplets equal even if they're elements at uh, different positions. So in this example, minus one, zero, one should be equivalent to minus one, one, zero. And this is not gonna work with the current implementation because we're modeling triplet as a list of integers. And equality for lists, uh, it takes into account the position of elements. So the most natural thing would be to try set instead because sets cannot have duplicates and they don't care about the position of elements. But then we can have duplicates in triplets, so set is not correct type to use here. Another natural thing might be to try multiset or a back data structure. So here I could use multiset from Guava collections. You probably wouldn't be able to do it on the lead code website because you cannot add any dependencies. And multiset will be okay, but there is an additional constraint that triplets can only have exactly three elements and multiset can have any amount of elements. So that's also not ideal. And for completeness, I would mention that there is a triple class in the Kotlin standard library, which takes exactly three elements, but it will have the same problem as the list interface. So in this particular case, I would just go all the way back to list of ints and try a different approach when we can just sort the elements in the list and this way the position of elements will not matter anymore. And the only question is how do we make sure that lists are always sorted and to do this I'll use a data class and it will have a value of type list, value of type list and we can add an init block which will check that value size is always three and that value is sorted. Now we can also move the function which we used as a constructor into the data class and convert it into a secondary constructor which will basically call the constructor with the list but now we can sort the elements before we wrap them into the list and this way like a test pass and this kind of works. And now we're in a position when we have some implementation which is 
the most straightforward implementation I could think of. And the whole point of this is to have something that is obviously correct, maybe very inefficient, but definitely correct and works for small examples. And in the real world, I would go ahead and add more tests to have a very good test coverage and then refactor the implementation. But that's for, for here and for now, let's uh, imagine that we have enough test coverage. So some things we could improve with the current implementation is to not iterate over all indices all the time. All we really need to do is in the first loop we can go from 0 to last index minus 2 because we don't want indices to overlap so we don't need to uh, go through all indices in this case. In, for the second loop we can go from i1 plus 1 to last index minus 1 and for the third loop we can go from i2 plus 1 to last index and it's last index because ranges in Kotlin are inclusive. And for index overlap, we hopefully don't need it anymore, so we can say this is always true, inline this, and simplify the condition. So I can run now tests and see if that works. So that, that passes, and that's some kind of optimization. Although, arguably, the previous implementation was a bit more straightforward. And that's where I would stop, but then there is definitely a constraint that the maximum size of the input is 3000 and it's probably worth trying it. And as you can guess, I tried it before and I expect that it will be too slow the current implementation. But just to prove it, I will actually write a test to show that it is a bit too slow and I'll call it performance on large input. So what we want here is to generate large list, and for this I'll use this list function and I'll specify size 100 to begin with. And here we'll have a lambda which will be called 100 times. And to, call the lam to generate numbers inside the lambda we can use a random class from Kotlin, let's say with seed 42, just to make things deterministic. And here we can call random next int and specify the range from 0, minus minus 100 and 5 to 106 because the end range is an exclusive. And then we can extract this into ints variable and on ints we want to find all the triplets. So this is going to be triplets variable and let's assert on triplet size because I don't think it will be easy to assert no, on large inputs and outputs. So this fails because the size is 303, so I'll approve this assuming this is all working. And now we have something that works and before I crank up the output to si uh, input size to 3000, let's maybe write an assertion around this expression because that's what we want when I say this expression doesn't take too long to run. And we can do it with assert timeout from JUnit5 which takes duration, which is a Java duration, and we can say of seconds, and let's say just one second. And then this assertion takes a lambda, which it will um, monitor, and if it takes too long, it will throw an exception. So this should still work, because uh, the input is still relatively small. And now we can try 3000, and I expect this assertion to fail. So it does, and it says that execution timed out after 1000 milliseconds. And before we try and optimize implementation, I would go back to 100 and see that it still works. So yeah, now we have back to working code. And what we can do here is just a normal trick of sorting the list first and then optimizing these two nested loops to be a single loop. So currently what we have is three nested loop, which is n cube theoretical time complexity. And well, we sort in lists as well, but uh, triplets, but let's ignore that for now. So what we want to do is to sort the whole list and then use the sorted list inside this lambda. So this run function basically means that we're now using sorted list. It might be a bit more obvious if I convert this to let, and now all the each variables, they refer to the sorted list. So let's run this code and see if that still works. It should. And at this point we can write the optimized loop which is based on the fact that list is sorted. So it will have two indices, left and right index. Left will start from i plus 1 and there will be right index which starts from it, last index. 
and then indices will move towards each other, and while left is less than right, we will do something like this, so we want to compare the sum is zero, essentially. But instead of i2, we want to say left, and instead of i3, we say right. And maybe we should rename this to just i. So when we found a triplet which has sum of zero, then we kind of use these three elements, so we can increment left index because we used this element, and decrement right index because we used them. So that's one thing. Then we have two more cases for the sum. One is when sum is less than zero, and in this case, we know that our elements are not big enough, so we want to maybe pick an element which is greater than the current set of elements, and we can do this by incrementing the left index, because in the sorted list, we're guaranteed to get an element which is greater or equal to the current one. And there is a similar logic for sum greater than zero, we can just decrement right index. And that's pretty much it. So we can delete those nested loops, run the current test again, so this still works. So we managed to replace those two loops with a single loop. And I can do a bit of cleanup here, so let's replace if with when, maybe inline increment and decrement, and reformat things so it looks a bit smaller. So the test still passes, but it's still on the small input. And now the interesting thing would be to use 3,000 elements as an input and see if it works. So it, it does fail, but importantly, it fails not because of the timeout. It's because the, we have a larger input and there will be more triplets in the larger input. So that actually solved the problem. What's interesting here is that we can we could extract 0 as a parameter and call it, let's say, target sum, but it will be harder to extract plus as a parameter and use it and replace it with some other function, because the, the whole trick about sorting the array relies on the natural order of numbers and its relationship to the plus operation. It's also interesting that now that we sorted the list, we can not necessarily sort the triplets on the construction. So if I remove this sorted, from the secondary constructor, test still pass. And we could even comment out the init block. And from this point of view, we're getting uh, proper n squared theoretical complexity. So that's all about this um, optimization in terms of the constraint on the size. There is another constraint, though, which I'm not going to get into this, but the, this is constraint on the range of possible values for the numbers in the list. And the, I think this is a, a nudge that there is a, another optimization, the idea of which is to move the performance bottleneck from the size of the input into the size of the range of numbers. And it can be done with convolution operation using uh, FFT. <laughs>